Okay, let's see what we've got here. Uh, Chenye Johnson, currently feeding my dog on raw food diet. She's six weeks pregnant. I've recently added puppy food to her raw diet since then. She's been licking her paws and has very red ears with lots of brown gunk. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, I mean, it could be a couple of things. The first thing is she's six weeks pregnant. And so dogs can have a hormone change to do with pregnancy. And that can bring on allergies that they didn't normally have. Um, but the licking of the paws and the ear thing, I think it's probably food related. And maybe it's because of the puppy food that you've introduced. You know, things like grain and various different things. Some dogs have um, grain allergies. You know, some have chicken allergies. I mean, I think this is related to the, probably to the, the puppy food that you're adding on with it. And so I would try different puppy food and see if that helps the situation. I would think that's probably what the cause of the problem is. And she also asked, why do you begin feeding your dog Bill Jack? Because it's higher protein, which is what you want to get done. You want to get your dog that puts on some weight, doesn't get skinny in preparation for having puppies. Because remember, when she has puppies, she's got to turn herself into puppies via the milk that she produces. So, so we want to get extra protein in there so she's got more ability to feed her puppies. Without that, you're going to see a dog that gets skinny. Uh, even with that, you can see a dog that gets skinny, especially in big litters. But it helps the situation to have more protein, hence the Biljack. And also, Biljack is very palatable. One of the problems you run into is their appetite tends to go off a week prior to and a few days after whelp. And the Biljack seems to help that situation. But it's not a magic, it, you know, if you don't, can't get Biljack or you don't use Biljack, it's absolutely fine. Just give her lots of food. Let her have whatever she can to eat and let her eat it. So, you know, picky diets during this time, boiled eggs, boiled rice, boiled chicken, all those kind of things can help. So if you've got a dog with a finicky diet, get some food in her. That's really the important point. What happened to your stud Giovanni? We retired him. He is now leaving, leading the life of leisure. He's, he's, he was retired. Uh, he was a pretty dog. Uh, Someone's saying, can you help me, please? Sure, send me what, what you need help on. Got to give me some input on what you need help on. Otherwise, I have to put my turban on and go like this and try to figure out what you mean. And my connection for that's not very good. Just being stupid. When you want to consider breeding your female, what health panel do you suggest doing on her and what company do you use? I use Animal Genetics and we do the four panel, the four panel health Animal Genetics. But there's other choices out there there's other tests that you can do i think now it's hard to know on this stuff because you know look, for instance if you look at the four panel french bulldog test from animal genetics it includes dm and frenchies don't suffer from dm so that's a waste of your money but it's in there you can do individual tests but it'll cost you more money anyway so you know you just take the dm and throw the throw the results out uh, Mr. B, I got a progesterone machine and want to collect plasma for my future pups. What's the proper way to collect plasma, plasma for puppies? Um, oh, I see. You're trying to collect... Pl okay. Yeah, so now there are two different things here. You're trying to collect plasma that you can use for your puppies and probably freeze it and have it in the, in the refrigerator so if you've got puppies in trouble versus plasma for a test. So when you're doing a test on the fine care machine, you need about half a cc or more of blood to spin down in a centrifuge, and then you collect the plasma off the top. And what you should do is collect the blood in a non-coagulating tube, just basically a fresh tube. Let it sit for 20 minutes, spin it, and collect the clear yellowy fluid off the top. That's the plasma. Um, if you're collecting plasma so that you want to feed the puppies, so you want to collect it because that, that's not enough there. You, it's all about the volume of blood that you collect. And I've never done this myself, so I don't want to say too much about it. But I mean, you're going to have to collect, you know, a decent amount of blood to get any kind of plasma off it. Because, you know, when you spin it down, maybe a third of it's going to be plasma and two thirds of it's going to be uh, blood, which you don't want the blood. So, you know, if you're going to feed the puppy, you know, a couple of cc's of plasma, you're going to have to pull at least five cc's of blood, which is not quite doable. But you're obviously going to collect a lot more blood in that situation if you're running a test. I hope that helps. Is it normal for a full fluffy or a fluffy carrier Frenchie 
back to be longer than average, no. No, the reason you might have a longer back is because the genetic pool for Frenchy Fluffies is getting much, much better, by the way, because there's so many more out of them out there, but they tend to be bigger dogs. Um, and so I'm seeing much nicer f uh, Fluffies. I mean, I've got a dog called Mando, for instance, who's a full fluffy Merle. He's a gorgeous dog with a short back and nice stocky little structure to him. And he's, you know, he's probably our nicest Fluffy. If you can pair that with, for instance, Denali and Wolfie, they are definitely bigger dogs. They don't have long backs, but we were, we were pretty careful about what we choose. But certainly I do see, but I see quite a few Frenchies that I consider have longer backs than I would like to have in my dogs. <laughs> but I don't think this is because of anything to do with DNA, just to do with the genetic pool that's available. <laughs> okay, rolling on. What if you didn't do, so this is uh, Ian Miller, what if you didn't do, an, if you did a natural tie, how do you tie the C-section? Um, well, in all these cases, you know, you're trying to get an approximate date for the C-section. You're not trying to narrow it down to an actual day that you're going to schedule a C-section because that'll get you in trouble. So in all these cases, the day that the dog mated, roll forward 61 days, and that's going to give you the approximate date that you can expect to do an, a, a, a C-section or, or do a whelp. Then go look at my videos, I've got tons of them on this, about how to look for the signs. But specifically, about a week prior to, you're gonna start taking the temperature, you're gonna watch the behavior of the dog, not eating food, nesting and panting, and then if you're not sure, you do a progesterone test and look for progesterone that's three or less, and you'll be okay. But I'm not gonna go any more in detail there because I've got so many videos on that. Uh, so, Ilhui Razo, I probably pronounced that wrong, and I apologize. Uh, my English Bulldog was born two days ago, uh, 111. One of the pups has a watery diarrhea, yellow color, kind of mucusy. Yeah, uh, is this bad? Um, so, well, so let's see, born two days ago. Well, typically we don't do a worming on dogs until they get to be about uh, two weeks old, certainly 10 days old, with pyrantal payomate on Emex 2. So you're a bit early for that. You know, um, you know, what I do in dogs that have generally runny mess is one thing that you can absolutely safely do is give that dog some canned pumpkin. So give that puppy some canned pumpkin. Just put some on the end of your finger, put it in its mouth. Give it some canned pumpkin. It helps firm things up. It gets a, a more of a, a diarrhea situation into more solid poop. And what you worry about with this watery poop is dehydration of the puppy. So you can lift the skin up on the back of the neck and if it tents up and stays up and doesn't go back down, that dog is dehydrated. And you can compare that to the other puppies to find out whether it's different. They should all be about the same. And the skin should fall back down very quickly. Look at my hand, I've got old skin. If I lift that up, you can see, but I put a hand like that, see if I can show this. No, it's hard to see it. But that's the tent and when I let it go, it just slowly goes down. In a young person, if I tense my hand up, it, it'll go down immediately. So that's the difference. There it goes down immediately versus it's staying up there. You can kind of see it slowly going down. That's tenting. If it tents, you, you're dehydrated. If you're dehydrated and you're, and you're tube feeding, you probably need to put some more water or Pedialyte in with, them, in with the, uh, the goat's milk. Um, and, and the pumpkin can help this because it gives the poop a longer time to stay in the uh, intestinal tract and get the nutrients absorbed, including the water. So you might try that. Um, but I'm not keen on giving puppies that are two or three days old anything particularly aggressive at that age. Um, someone's asking here, Royal Flush asks, would AA and Coco be a lilac? No, it's not. It has to have little d, little d to be alive. AA is the A locus gene, and AA is what's called recessive black. It's not really a black gene, it produces a solid coat color. But AA hasn't got anything to do with uh, lilac. Lilac specifically is a dog that's little d, little d blue combined with little co, little co, cocoa makes a lilac. Versus little d, little d blue, little b, little b makes an Isabella. And if it has both little b and little co, then it's a new shade. Uh, French bred bulldogs. Once again, thank you for your great products. I've purchased your heated tape for the Whelpy Box. Great incubation for the first time I've shipped out my first semen using shipmate to Colorado and I've received a pregnancy confirmation. 
yay, good for you. I, I mean, you know, again, you know, obviously I'm on my salesman hat here, so anything that I say has to be taken somewhat with a grain of salt. But, you know, these products that we manufacture, they absolutely do work. And we spent a lot of time and effort developing these things specifically to make ourselves more successful, make you more successful. So the Shipmate product is the only uh, temperature controlled shipping system out there. And I mean, it makes a huge difference, especially on trips that are going to take some time. Trips that can last for 24 hours, the throwaway boxes don't do too bad. They're not as good, but they're acceptable. The problem gets to be when there's unforeseen problems where your shipment gets delayed, and that does happen. And when that happens, and you're using one of these, um, what I call passive systems, these $50 shipping boxes, um, there's disastrous results. And remember, our shipmate products are reusable. So though it costs you maybe three times as much in the beginning, you can use it over and over and over and over again. And I've got shipmate products that have been used for the last oh, five, six years, and they've probably done 100 plus trips. That is it for this one. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.